So the next question is write a note on Johnson tail counter. So you know that the difference between the ring counter and Johnson tail counter is that the output uh, Q0 bar is fed to the input, serial input. Whereas in the case of ring counter, Q0 will be fed back as the input. That is the difference. So it is also called as modified ring counter or twisted ring counter or twisted counter by different names okay and it is also called by divide by 2n counter so divide by 2n counter okay so uh, here in this uh, example i have taken the four bit johnson tail counter the four bit johnson ta johnson tail counter counts eight clock pulses that's why it is called as divide by n counter means n bit will count 2n clock pulses okay or 2n count so it is called as divide by 2n counter okay now uh, here in this diagram you will have the d2 d3 d2 d1 d0 as your input and q3 q2 q1 q0 as your output then you have your clock signal and in addition to the clock you have a clear and preset signal which are negative because for initial setting here you have a bubble that's why it is negative okay and the clock signal is also a negative trigger clock signal because there is a bubble present so let us see the timing sorry before the timing diagram let us see the truth table so truth table what will happen during the uh, let us assume that during the initial case your output of all the flip flops is equal to zero so your Q0 is equal to 0. What will happen to your Q0 bar? Q0 bar will be 1 which will be fed to your input, series input Xi. So, so initially let us assume that all the contents of the registers are is, uh, is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. During the first clock pulse what will happen? The Q0 bar will be uh, shifted. Q0 is equal to 1. So Q0 bar will be equal to 1, right? That 1 will be shifted as Xi. Xi is nothing but your D3. Now output of the D, uh, D3 that is your first uh, third flip flop will be equal to 1. That's the reason why your Q3 is equal to 1. It is shifted and all other bits will be shifted to the right. So 1, Q3 will be shifted to Q2, Q2 to Q1, Q1 to Q0. For the second clock pulse what will happen? Again you will be having your Q0 bar again shifted here. So 1, 1, 0, 0. So it happens still. Let us take the third clock pulse. Third clock pulse also your uh, register contains 1, 1, 1, 0. Now in this case your Q0 bar is again equal to 1. In the fourth clock pulse again it is 1 1 1 1 but in this case q0 is equal to 1 so what will be your q0 bar q0 bar is equal to 0 that is why you have a change here now okay so it uh, carries on in same way whereas in the last case here you have your q0 is equal to 1 again it is going to be 0 but whereas in your eighth clock pulse your q0 is equal to 0 your q0 bar will be equal to 1 where it will be setting to the initial condition so it counts till 0 to 7 so if we take the timing diagram so this is your clock signal first clock since it is a bubble is there for your clock it is a negative triggering clock so this is your first clock pulse second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth etc now if i take this as your xi so whatever is written here i am representing it by your timing diagram q3 q2 q1 q0 so in the timing diagram what is happening during the first clock pulse what is happening your uh, q3 is equal to 1 q2 is equal to 0 0 0 so q3 will go on to 1 q2 will be 0 and q1 will go to 0 q0 also will be in 0 what will happen in your second clock pulse second clock pulse your q3 is 1 q2 1 q1 0 0 so 1 1 0 0 so in the second clock pulse it again goes to 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is how you have to fill your timing diagram. So this is the working principle of your Johnson tail counter. It is just similar to that of your ring counter. But the difference is there. There, it, uh, there the difference is your Q0 is fed as input. Whereas your in this case Q0 bar is taken as your input. And you have 0 to 7. That is 8 different clock pulses for your 4 bit counter. Okay, so it is also called by divide by 2n counter because n bit counts 2n counts. Okay.